I have some production jobs in the shop. Have to make, uh, uh, you know, like 100, 150 of each of these. So that's good. So today we're going to be pouring resin in the shop. And I thought, while I'm pouring resin, I might as well talk about resin. Just talk about things that you need to know to cast resin. This is sort of a intro to resin casting uh, while I production pour. That's what I'm doing today. I hope you come along for the ride. The thing you really need to remember is that temperature matters. This is not complicated. If you're comfortable, the resin is comfortable. I work in a big old warehouse and it's way too big to, for me to heat the whole thing. Uh, so I don't bother. I just heat the local environment and that means heating the materials we work with. So here's the hot box. You can see it's just a repurposed refrigerator. If you want to learn more about how I made it, uh, you can watch the video that's uh, up above or down in the link below. So the resin in here is nice and warm. Let's see what we got. It's Oh, it's so beautiful. It's 75 degrees, just what it should be. And notice, it's not just the resin jugs that are warm. It's the molds, it's the cups, it's everything we're going to need. What you need to get is a material data sheet, which is information provided by the manufacturer. And it'll tell you pretty much what you need to know in terms of uh, instructions for how to use this stuff, what it is, all the good stuff, kind of the technical data. Anyway, my manufacturer wants me to shake the B-side, uh, get it nicely mixed up. And I will do that, and the, and the cap comes off easily, as you can see, it just unscrews, and that's because this stuff will not air harden at all. The A side, on the other hand, does not need to be shaken, but it's really hard to get the cap off, so I keep handy dandy wrench for that purpose. Let's get this, okay. The reason that the, the wrench, the cap is hard to get off is the A side will harden in air. It will, if you leave it out, it will harden. You're gonna develop these happy little crusties. You can see them flying off of here. Uh, and those are just the drips when you pour the stuff, dispense the stuff, um, that harden up, even though I'm gonna wipe it. I find it very hard to work with this resin in these big old jugs. So when I'm working with them, what I like to do is I like to dispense out a little bit of resin. And I am not dispensing, I'm not filling the cup, because if you fill the cup, when you go to pour it, it's hard to fill. So it's maybe half a cup. Here's why you get the crusties on the A-side rim, because you get little drips. And no matter how hard you wipe, over time, over the course of using up a jug like this, you just get, it just kind of builds up. It just sort of does. And I'm not too fanatic about cleaning it, but I want to keep it so that it, if you don't wipe it, by the way, pretty soon you're going to have a big mass of crusty around the rim of the jug, and that's no good at all. So got the A-side dispensed, and we've got the B-side dispensed. I, you can tell the difference. The B-side's clearer, the A-side is more amber colored, but still, I mark the cups. I remove all the variables, remove all doubt. A lot of artists aren't very good at resin casting, and the reason for that is they're kind of right brain, they're kind of free thinkers, and they're like, woo, you know, they're not, the, they're not that precise. But that doesn't work for resin casting. It doesn't work for mold making, and it doesn't work for resin casting, because you have to weigh this material out. It's a 50-50 blend. There's two parts, A and B, and they have to be weighed out, dispensed into perfect 50-50 ratios by weight. And that weight thing is crucial. It's not optional. You can't just kind of guess, oh, eh, it looks about the same. Well, you can. Sometimes it'll work, but a lot of times it won't. You might, you'll just get bad castings. They'll either become out soft, they'll never harden, they'll be really brittle, they'll be, they'll just, they won't be right. And so you have to pay attention to the weight when you measure them out and you have to do it carefully and accurately. It does, it really matters. Uh, this is one of the things that most artists kind of go through this learning curve where they're kind of sloppy, and then the more they work with the stuff, the more and more precise they get because they have to, they don't have a choice. I switched the resin into a bigger cup because I'm gonna make a bunch of castings today and I wanna add some color into it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. I don't need to add a lot. Get some of this dye going. Okay, how are we doing here? Oh yeah, that's a nice, that's gonna be a nice, nice pink color. Very good. People ask me, why don't I wear gloves when I'm working with this toxic resin, this nasty stuff? If I'm working with this material and I get, and I get resin on the gloves, I can't tell that I got it on there. I don't notice it. And then I walk around my shop and I touch everything in the shop and now I got resin all over everything. So I prefer to work barehanded and then if I get any resin on my hands, I immediately use the correct solvent, which in this case is acetone and paper towel, and I keep my hands clean. 
I'm going to be pouring these simultaneously. In other words, I'm going to pour two castings in one shot. So I need to know what they weigh so I know how much resin to weigh out. Let's begin. So I have my scale zeroed out. 20 grams, 30 grams, 40 grams, 50 grams. It's 48 grams, 49 grams. I'm going to call it uh, 50 grams. And then I'm going to need a little bit for the cup. So I, what do you think? 60 grams. I'll waste 10 grams per, but I'll have stuff to give to the cup. And then we'll have a witness cup. So 60 gram shot. That's what we're pouring today. One of the things I do is I keep the molds clean. See how there's a little bit of flash in there? That'll just build up. So you want to get that out of there. I blow it out, I puff and puff, I scrape it, but it's really, it's really very, very minimal cleanup to be done if you do this right. But you want to make sure that those parting lines, see how that parting line just falls together and locks together? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, so nice. And why are we a fan of that? Because we don't want to spend any time cleaning up resins. The less work you do in life, the happier you are. Because who wants to work? Not me. I like to have fun. This is fun to me. This is just like, I'm just goofing off when I do this stuff. Even when I'm working on professional jobs and the pressure's on and I can't screw it up and, you know, those are less fun because there's a little more worry when I'm just doing YouTube silliness. This is just sheer fun. All right, that thing is ready to pour. Let's get it on. When I pour more than one mold at a time, I often put them in a cradle to load them into the pot with. You'll see me do that. Let's get this thing poured. Good, let's measure out this resin, starting with 20 grams of the A. Just dump it. Oh, we're real close, actually. Good. Okay, that's 28, almost 28, 29 grams. All right, 30 grams. Wipe the cup. Set it to 50, dump in 20. So I use a dump and sneak up method. Now I've got, need 10 more grams in the cup, so let's just go to six. Okay, we're at six. We're sneaking up on it. We're at eight, almost eight, nine. Set it to 60, we're very close. You just pour the last couple grams. That's the quick way to use a balance beam scale. Dump in a big amount, measure in increments, and dump in a big amount in the beginning and then sneak up on it. All right, beautiful. Let's stir, stir, stir. Get these things poured. You don't have to super rush, but you gotta move on. You don't have time. This thing is gonna come out of the molds in 20 minutes, so we don't have all day. Let's go. Get cracking here, kids. Okay, I'm gonna pour this one first, because I know this mold, I know from experience, I will catch a bubble in his chin if I'm not careful. So I'm gonna partially pour it and tip it like that. That way I know I'm less likely to catch a bubble down in that chin. Do it again, okay? Now when you're casting, pouring multiple molds, you gotta go, go, go. You don't have all day, you gotta go. That's why you want your molds to fill fast. And hopefully I'll have time to get all this resin in there before it gets set. I can already feel it's getting warm because it's nice and warm. It's cold in the shop, but the resin's nice and warm. So it wants to set up. And we'll hope we make it. I'm not gonna make it on that one. Should be good. Taking its sweet time rising up that flume, let me tell you. But it should be there, it is there, okay. All right, we are golden. It came up the flume just fine. It's already beginning to go off. Let's get this thing into the tanks. Come along for the ride, I'm gonna hand hold you. Whee! All right, get these things, put them in the tank. Nice, beautiful, ease them on in there. All right, close out the outlet valve. All right, let's get this in there. Let's get this lid put on. I'm gonna one hand it. All right, get that in there. Okay, we should be well cured up. Yep. The witness cup tells all that what's going on in this cup is the same thing that's going on inside the mold. So turn the air inlet off so that locks the, uh, the main tank of the compressor away from the tank here. Let's let the air out. 
This apparatus right here is a muffler. The air is flying out the end, nice and cold when it comes out, expands. Anyway, uh, without that muffler on, it'd be pretty loud coming out of that tank. All right, let's see here. Let's pull these boys out, see what we got. There they are living down in their tank. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, looking good. All right, let's go over here. Back to the bench. All right, let's get these things taken apart. Oh, my favorite thing in the world to do. This really is why I like most. First of all, I've just got to say it. Look at that parting line. Come on. Just look at it. Hardly see it, huh? Let's find it, shall we? There it is. There's the parting line. Nice. Same on the other side. You can hardly see it. Oh, it's fantastic. All right, let's pull this bad boy out of here. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Just absolutely a perfect casting. So nice. Very minimal flash. Look how little flash there is on that. Just hardly anything at all. It just almost, you can almost just brush it off with your fingers. So thin and so fine. Hardly leaves a line at all. It's just just the barest little indication of a parting line. And that is why I love cut molds. I know I say it over and over again. I'm a cut mold guy. I'm a cut mold fan. Let's do this one, see if I can brag and boast about this one. Again, notice the parting line. You think it's this seam, right? But that isn't, that's just the, that's just the mold case seam. It has nothing to do with the mold. Let's find the parting line. Where is it? I don't even know where it is. Let's find it. There it is. See how hard that is to see? Look at that. You wouldn't even know it was there. So nice. Oh my goodness. Let's take a look. All right. Little bits of flash. So this tells me when I see a little bit of flash like that, see that flashing on there? That rubber band up there could have been a little bit tighter. So I'm, I can adjust that. Can not make the knot a little tiny bit tighter, just close it a little more. But even so, this is, look at that, it just scrapes right off your fingernail. It just pops right off. So minimal, really excellent. Very, very pleased with the way these come out. And let me tell you something, when you have to make 150 of these, you do not want to be spending hours and hours and hours, you know, scraping and cleaning and sanding and polishing. And, you know, that is just the quickest way uh, to, to, you know, you'll find yourself in the suicide prevention hotline in uh, about 10 minutes of that. So, yeah, you want this. This is how you want to do it. Clean, perfect, so nice. This is the resin left over from yesterday, and I didn't throw it out because I wanted to show you what happens when urethane resin absorbs moisture from the air. All right, so let's mix this together, see if anything fun happens. Okay, it's nice and mixed. Well, this business about uh, resin absorbing moisture from the air, as you can see, it is not a joke. Look at that. Look at what a mess that is. Now you know why you want to leave the lids on your jars, boys and girls, because man, oh man, you will make a mess if you let the stuff sit out overnight. It's pretty much useless. That is why at the end of each day, I throw the resin cups out. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, these bubbles are just a surface effect, right? They just foams up a little on the surface. So just for you doubters, I cut the resin in half. You know, moisture didn't get stirred in there. It's simply absorbed it from the atmosphere. And here is why you want to keep the lids on your jugs and why you don't want to let your resin get exposed to air. We're ready to pull out the last casting for this video. Let's check our witness cup. Yep, nice and solid. I have a theory about my YouTube channel that says, I'm going to learn more from all of you than you're going to learn from me. If for no other reason there's only one of me, and there's a whole bunch of you. Let's get these taken out. So if you see anything I'm doing, you think I'm nuts, or you think you know a better way to do it, <laughs> you know, or you just have questions, hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I'd like to hear your ideas. If you like the video, hit the like button. 
Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you don't like it, if you saw something you didn't like, what the hell, hit the dislike button. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, it'll be fine. Let's pull this one out. Oh, yeah. Uh, looking good, looking good. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Your subscription really helps my channel out. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Let's get this one out. I think we're almost done. Let's see it. There they go. Beautiful. Another perfect casting in this part of the project is done. Got all of our castings made. It's the end of the day and time to close up the shop. You know what that means. Time to put the lids on the resin jugs. You saw what happens when urethane sucks up moisture from the air. Put the lids on the jugs. I'm only telling you that because this stuff's expensive and you know, you, you'll believe me, you don't want to waste it. And if you don't have these fancy pots that I have, these pressure pots, all you're going to make is bubble castings. Put the lids on the jugs.